Welcome to Mastering and Guide Learning Ultrasound and Echo. Hey everyone. Uh, here there are other four uh, clips uh, that will help you if you go first check them out and then come and review this one. If I say uh, pulmonary pressure uh, is more important the systemic blood pressure I haven't exaggerated uh, because the survival of the patient with systemic blood pressure is not too much low but the expand, ex, uh, life expectancy in patient with the uh, pulmonary hypertension is average three to five years without treatment and with treatment is 10 years so we have to know how much is important uh, pulmonary pressure and measuring and uh, not only that one opposite of the systemic blood pressure high hypertension that is uh, usually idiopathic or primary unknown causes but in the pulmonary hypertension uh, usually is uh, secondary and primary or idiopathic is rare so uh, in another word, uh, measuring uh, pulmonary pressure uh, is very important and we have to make it as a routine like the systemic blood pressure we measure in any patient. Uh, we have to measure uh, pulmonary arterial uh, systolic and diastolic pressure too. But there is one problem because we don't have access uh, to the pulmonary artery uh, external in systemic uh, for the uh, systemic blood pressure we just we can go measure on the arm or maximum on the leg and we can get uh, systolic and diastolic blood pressure but in pulmonary uh, the golden standard is uh, cardiac catheterization but uh, nowadays the many research uh, show that echocardiography can be almost accurate as cardiac uh, catheterization uh, for measuring pulmonary uh, systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Now let's see how we can do it. For evaluation of the pulmonary pressure, we measure three parameters. First, systolic, then diastolic, and finally, mean pulmonary artery pressure. Now, let's first go with the systolic pulmonary artery pressure. As you know, right ventricular uh, is responsible for creating pulmonary artery pressure. Whatever uh, maximum uh, pressure in right ventricular is, it will be the same amount to the uh, pulmonary artery systolic pressure. So, RV systolic pressure equal systolic pulmonary artery pressure. So if we can measure uh, maximum pressure gradient in the right ventricle, we calculate pulmonary artery systolic pressure. So for that purpose, we can use a TR because right ventricular uh, force and uh, pressure create the same amount of the uh, pressure gradient on the TR. The only thing is that this pressure has been created against the right atrial pressure. So whatever uh, the right atrial pressure be, uh, if we add it with the pressure gradient of the TR, we can finally measure systolic pulmonary artery pressure. As I mentioned in this lecture, and you can go check it, we can measure right atrial pressure by the IVC in inferior vena cava uh, size and collapsibility and go check it this one and with the continuous putting continuous on TR we can measure TR or tricuspid regurgitation pressure gradient and finally with this formula we calculate systolic pulmonary artery pressure for example if we have a patient we have TR and we measure Vmax 2.8 with uh, and we measure IVC and collapsibility and finally came to the number 5 uh, the pulmonary artery systolic pressure will be 4 multiple Vmax uh, uh, squared and plus right atrial pressure that uh, become equal 
36 millimercury on this case. And as based on the classification of the pulmonary artery pressure by WHO, uh, this amount go to the this category that uh, go to the mild pulmonary or grade one pulmonary artery uh, hypertension. I have to mention again some uh, specialists and researchers use a 35 to 40 millimercury of the PASP as a borderline or upper uh, limit normal. Just uh, mention that one. Now let's see first before I go to the diastolic, uh, how we measure diastolic pulmonary pressure. I want to emphasize uh, about the catching uh, TR because it has some trick and you need have some tips and skill that I give you. You almost always, except if uh, rare cases, almost always you can get a TR from any patient. As in the routine uh, echocardiogram, we do uh, evaluate for TR in uh, four view. Uh, RVIT, PZAX, Apical, uh, four chamber view, and sometimes uh, subcostal. But uh, in most of cases, in these uh, four views, we can uh, detect TR and uh, measure uh, Vmax of the tricuspid regurgitation. But in many cases, uh, the jet is not parallel to the uh, sound beam or is not clear, we cannot uh, see jet in those regular views. My recommendation is that in all patients, especially when they are suspicious to the pulmonary hypertension and they need, you need to get uh, TR. It doesn't matter if the patient has hypertension or not, or any symptom related to that or not. Try to get in all uh, patient TR uh, pressure gradient. For that purpose, beside of those uh, classic four view, I recommend strongly do uh, two more uh, view. One of them is RV focus view that I explained in another lecture. Another is uh, medial off axis for chamber focusing on the tricuspid, this view. For this view, uh, just go move uh, your transducer a little medial a little mean few centimeter or little more and one or two intercostal higher so you can see probe as the this level of the right ventricle and heart this way and this view actually is the best uh, view and window for catching TR especially when it's eccentric toward the intraatrial septum and this in this situation you can make it jet and cursor parallel to each other and many cases, I got it highest uh, pulmonary pressure and TR max, V max at this view. So don't forget uh, this view. Try to get used to it to all patients get this view that is not in usually in routine uh, protocol of the transthoracic echocardiography. In some cases that you see uh, TR but it's not strong because the uh, rule for the TR measuring, you have to have a strong envelope that you measure peak. If it is not strong, you shouldn't measure it. For that purpose, in those cases that TR is important, you can use bubble test contrast uh, or contrast with the definity. And it helps you get it a strong uh, envelope and measure uh, TR Vmax. For diastolic pulmonary artery pressure, is the same uh, concept uh, for the systolic, but in only in the diastole. And for that purpose, uh, instead of the TR, we need uh, PR, pulmonary regurgitation, that most patients, they have it. For that purpose, we go to the RVOT view or PZAX on the pulmonary that uh, we can uh, get Doppler continuous on the pulmonary regurgitation and we get Doppler, spectral Doppler of the PR. Then we go measure uh, the maximum velocity at the end of the diastole here, not the peak uh, diastole, end of the diastole. 
and then with using this formula we can measure the osteoarthritic pulmonary artery pressure is that will be equal right atrial pressure plus the pressure gradient of the endosteolic uh, pulmonary regurgitation square uh, for example if we measure right atrial pressure 10 millimercury based on the ivc size and collapsibility and we do Doppler and we measure endosteolic uh, PR uh, 2 meter per second, uh, our diastolic pulmonary artery pressure will be 26 millimercury. For mean pulmonary artery pressure, we have uh, four options. The most accurate is uh, this formula mean pulmonary artery pressure equal two-thirds of the diastolic pulmonary artery pressure plus one-third of the systolic pulmonary artery pressure. If we don't have any of those two, we can use uh, this uh, three formula or equation. One of them is the Bestani formula equation. In this uh, technique, uh, we go measure acceleration time of the RVOT but sometimes they call pulmonary artery acceleration time, but more accurate is RVOT acceleration time. Then we put in this formula. Or we put on this formula. Both of them almost uh, give the same uh, result. For that purpose, we have to go to the PZAX or RVOT. We put sample volume on about the uh, pulmonary artery at the uh, ring or RVOT diameter uh, 2 means exactly about the ring uh, exactly when we do LVOT the same manner our cursor uh, should be almost parallel to the LVOT, RVOT and half centimeter uh, maximum about the pulmonary valve uh, ring then we on the Doppler that is passed by Doppler we measure acceleration time uh, for that there is option in the calculation on the machine if you hit it uh, and you put it the first cursor at the beginning of the envelope mean right after click that belong to the opening of the pulmonary valve correspond exactly at the R and then the other one at the peak Sometimes machine, some machine, when you do the first one, machine catch the peak and you can use that one or adjust that one. So it gives us acceleration time uh, of the RVOT. The normal acceleration time for RVOT is less than 130 millisecond. In another uh, technique is measuring a peak uh, velocity of the pulmonary regurgitation jet not in the osteolic. So we go get a Doppler of the pulmonary regurgitation or PI or PR. Then we measure the peak of the uh, regurgitation. Then we put on this formula, four multiple V max square of the peak PR. And then we calculate uh, mean pulmonary artery pressure. As we know, all those measurements uh, based on the Doppler and uh, velocity of TR and PI, all of them dependent on the right ventricle function. So in those situations uh, that we have uh, right ventricular dysfunction, uh, our measurement will be underestimated uh, pulmonary artery pressure. And so always we have to correspond our result with the other finding. And one of those findings are uh, 2D finding. As you know, when we have vol volume overload, uh, if it's special is chronic, uh, we will have a right uh, ventricle enlargement. And when we have pressure overload, we have right ventricular systolic uh, pressure in chronic type. But again, you have to remember that uh, is in the chronic situation, pulmonary hypertension can uh, cause right ventricular hypertrophy and even right atrial hypertrophy, but it is in chronic. For example, in this case, patient with McConnell sign and pulmonary embolism that is acute hyper, uh, 
pulmonary hypertension. In that situation, we will expect to see uh, dilated right ventricle, not the hypertrophy. So in those acute uh, high pulmonary uh, hypertension, we will expect to see uh, right ventricular dilatation instead of the hypertrophy. And uh, always we have to correspond those stuff and uh, check the right ventricular systolic function if we want to measure pulmonary artery systolic pressure. If his tap C and tap V has been decreased, 100% our evaluation based on the Doppler should, uh, will be underestimated. When we have uh, any abnormality in the size of the uh, RV or suspicious pulmonary hypertension and our result, one of those other measurements we have to measure the myocardium and the right ventricle wall thickness in the subcostal four chamber that I explained in another lecture, you can check it out, and the diameter of the uh, two diameter of the left ventricle and evaluate the location and position of the septum during systole and diastole. And again, as you, I mentioned in another lecture, in volume overload, we have uh, diastolic flattening uh, on the septum. On the pulmonary hypertension or pressure overload on the right side, we have end systolic flattening of the uh, septum. Depending on the severity, it can be only at the end of the systole, and if it's very severe, it can be all holosystolic flattening of the septum is all dependent of the severity of the pulmonary uh, pressure and right ventricular pressure. So you have to do those other evaluation when you uh, check for this uh, pulmonary artery uh, systolic and diastolic pressure. Another good finding that indicate pulmonary pressure is high is M mode. As you know, in M mode, uh, when, when we do M mode, based on because of the view of the and orientation of the pulmonary valve, on M mode of the pulmonary valve, we will uh, can catch one of those uh, cusps. And in the normal situation, the pattern of the pulmonary valve M mode is looks like a radical sign shape. We have A, V, and C, D, and also on. But in uh, when we have high pulmonary pressure, the pattern change to the double. We lose the A wave and the pattern shape as a, a W shape that uh, represent this at the mid of the systole uh, valve uh, clo goes closing to position. And so it created a W shape, we called it flying W sign. And we can see this pattern correspond with this pattern on the pulmonary or more accurate RVOT pulse Doppler as a notch at the mid uh, systolic, as you can see here with shortening of the uh, RVOT acceleration type. Up to the next time, have a wonderful time.